Geographic profiling is complementary to psychological profiling and the criminal investigative analysis process. It analyzes locations associated with crime and provides high-level geospatial analysis to bring clarity to large volumes of data. The bottom line is, it takes a whole lot of dots on a map and tells us why one dot is meaningful when analyzed against a different dot. So let's talk about geographic profiling. If you're new to Profiling Evil, welcome aboard. If you're one of my university students or a longtime channel member, welcome back and thanks for supporting us. Hey, please make sure you're hitting the link uh, to the like button. Now, let's talk about this geographic profiling business. Everything in a crime scene is a dot on the map. I mean, it might be the location where a shooting occurred, where the bullet casing fell on the ground, or where the weapon was purchased or maybe disposed of. All of these locations paint a clearer picture of who the offender might be and why they selected certain locations as part of their criminal pathway. Using geography as a part of an investigation reveals important visual information, such as the offender's most likely area of residence, or, or maybe whether the crime was opportunistic or a targeted event. It can point to an offender's familiarity with the location, and it can reveal other pieces of probable evidence, things that the detectives might want to consider, like traffic camera locations or possible witnesses. Geographic profiling isn't new. In fact, pin maps have been around in police investigations for a long time. Sadly, though, some agencies are still using a more digital form of pin mapping instead of leveraging powerful GIS tools. GIS is Geographic Information Systems. Now, the idea of using location to better understand who an offender is assumes that offenders are more likely to select their victims and commit crimes near their homes, or at least near places they're comfortable with. Now, as you think of these human predators, envision a predatory animal like a lion. A lion will hunt in the same geographic region as long as there's an ample food source, the, the antelope, for instance. And they'll continue to hunt in that area as long as they're successful and they remain unharassed. These areas become comfort zones for the predatory offender, a place where they can commit their crime because of the familiarity they have. So the more unfamiliar the territory becomes, the greater the risk of being observed, making mistakes, or ultimately being captured. Interestingly, Criminals rarely commit crimes close to their homes. Again, it just makes sense. It's the risk of being identified by a neighbor. In this segment, I'm going to lean upon my English friend, Dr. Spencer Cheney, to help us better understand how geographic profiling is used to solve crimes. After you listen to my conversation with Dr. Cheney, I want you to jump over and read a Wired article, How Geographic Profiling helps find serial criminals. It's by Jode Medeiros. And, and then take some time to explore GIS systems, geographic information systems. And you don't want to miss my recent appearance on 60 Minutes Australia, where I use the power of GIS and spotlight its capability in the worst serial case in Australia, the case of Mr. Cruel. So please take a moment. Let me know what you see as the real power of geography in these types of investigations. Think about your own daily routines for a moment. I want you to pull out a map and mark it up with things that you do every single day. Where do you get breakfast in the morning? Is there a particular place you buy a Coke or grab a cup of coffee? And what about the spot where you get fuel for your vehicle? Plot these locations out and then see what kind of story you're painting about your daily rituals. I mean, really, can somebody predict where you're going to be tomorrow based on what you did today? I think you'll be interested. Well, I hope you find this segment helpful. 
and I hope it helps you better understand uh, geography in these crimes. If you like this video, again, please hit that like and subscribe button. Profiling Evil can be found on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you're into podcasts, folks, you got to look for us on your favorite podcast platform. So thanks for supporting us, and we'll see you soon at the next crime scene.